my friend. We'll save mana and let you succumb to the poison itself. Beautiful. No one's wearing poison resistant armor, so that's nice. It's definitely an issue that we've run into before with Orc. You never really know what kind of equipment these Sons of Guns are going to be sporting. But nothing unmanageable here and we get access to a bunch of shops. Uh, Blinking almost definitely will buy. Actually, Brilliance I'll buy just because it doubles as an identify for 55 gold. And, ooh, okay, now that's quite the shop. Don't mind if I do. Lots of mutation for when things go south in the future as well. And another scroll of Lincoln. Don't you know, let's just buy all these now. Now we've looked at all of our shops and there's nothing too pressing. Oh, actually, do want let's get both of you. Fantastic. Things go smoothly. You know, it it always does when you have this combination of spells. It's hard to get an orc that you run into trouble with, the exception, of course, being some of the, like, range-themed orc levels, or, you know, if a rogue shows up, then you just get the heck out of dodge. That's not worth our time of day here. But there we go. A nice amount of experience. Yeah, already up to 10.4 air magic just from that. You love to see it. And so let's take a peek. Here, some lightning spire, getting closer. Freezing cloud is still a bit off, but we could train some conjuration because we might be transitioning into a bit of a spellforge servitor or destruction style run as well. Air and conjuration is a nice little combination to say the least. So I think I will do that. Turn on conjurations. Let's bring that bad boy up to somewhere around 10. Air magic. Can even come to third. I was actually gonna say 14 and just misclicked. Was there storm form? I do have storm form, so that's another reason why air magic was top of the agenda. And I'm bouncing all over the place between what I want. It's good to have the defensive capabilities of storm form. Storm form manifold assault. You know how much I love it. Don't have to convince myself too hard there, but I do occasionally like to. Uh, to stretch our legs and try some different approaches to things and we'll see how that goes down ah see you're not who i wanted to see my friend very fast and resistant to poison hmm Some of this, some of that, and perfect. Then walk away before that noise attracts too much attention because it is quite a loud combination there, Mephitic Cloud and Ignite Poison, but does get the job done and beautiful. Oh, you know, that was a very bad cast in Mephitic Cloud. Should definitely get a little more uh, efficiency out of my casts. Make sure that, you know, a third of the squares aren't just being wasted on wall spots. Fantastic. And yeah, so this, all this is exactly why we didn't start by coming here. So far, it's been nothing but enemies that are the bane of my existence. Speak of the devil. Okay, you, my friend. Oh, Gastronach as well. Interesting. Oh, we also felt a bit more experience, so we actually killed that Boulder Beetle. And Gastronach Airstrike can probably one-shot me, hey? 2D, 18 to 34. 2D, 34 is definitely a problem. Up next to walls, not so much. Let's stay next to all three walls here. Just keep poisoning you and blowing you up, and that should do it. Fantastic. A little bit riskier than necessary. Probably could have just run away from that son of a gun for now, because it would have just taken some nasty airstrikes, and we would have been down for the count. Even minimum damage there, 2d18, is way more than I feel comfortable taking at this stage in our journey, but... It did work out, so I can't exactly complain too, too much. 
And that's more like it. If we could get more bears, I would be very down. We would have cleared the rest of the floor first to ensure it was one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, definitely could have. But I'm not too plussed about it. It's not the end of the world one way or another. And now you, my friend. Oh, do you know what? That was pointless. Let's just leave that stairwell. And head somewhere else. It's unfortunate that we have Snake as our S branch here. I was definitely hoping against hope here that we would see Spider, because Spider with OTR and Ignite Poison is a joke. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is, and it's not the end of the world. We've been through this with most of our cats, if not all of our cats. At least all of our recent cats have had to deal with snakes, so I'm sure we'll be just fine in the long run here. And we'll just keep it moving. Again, that's more like it. Bunch of enemies that we can actually have reasonable effect against you just love to see it so much nicer not too shabby burning through a decent chunk of this floor here very quickly and there i pulled my uh main move a little bit sooner than i should have you kind of want to wait for the enemies to step into them i mean the cane toad ended up stepping into my fire clouds which is a bit of a shock to me, seeing as how I thought that they'd have, you know, a modicum of self-preservation, but that's fine, I'm not complaining, for sure. And let's get you, my friend, standing in some clouds. Beautiful. That will at least mostly do the trick. Even poison you a little bit with sting, getting past your poison resistance that's not too shabby. OTR is something you haven't cast in a while, not since 0.26-ish. I can't say the same for myself. I find that I am hopelessly addicted to OTR. <laughs> There's just nothing quite like it. For how early you get it online and how powerful it is against all these early enemies, it is just absolutely stellar. So I'm glad to have it on this run. I mean, well, guaranteed to have it since we started as Poison Elementalist, but lucking out and finding Ignite Poison in the first couple floors of the dungeon is stupid lucky. Because that's when the combo truly gets the shine. OTR alone is nothing to really write home about at the end of the day. Okie dokie. Let's, uh, yeah, let you step into that real quick, my friend. Get some poison going and beautiful. Again, not the end of the world with the snakes. Hopefully by the time we have to clear the actual branch, we'll be in a slightly better spot in terms of non-poison reliant damage, but we'll see how things go. And now that's more like it. Perfect. Rinse and repeat with those sons of guns, and you as well, my friend, shouldn't be too, too rough to deal with. That's not how you're supposed to go. Let's try that again. Let's try that again, he said. There we go. Perfect. First try. It was just that you need to have something against poison resistant enemies anyways. You'd rather invest something there instead. Totally fair. Now I find that that's... It just requires a slightly different approach to some sections of the game, like not always going straight to lair first and stuff like that, then you can really take advantage of OTR and get some pretty stellar things going. Okay, the moccasin is about to ruin my whole strategy here, so we will walk away from this encounter. Man, I was excited, Death Yaks, for a cat at this level are such a good source of experience without being that dangerous really even at the end of the day so always super happy to see it bit of a shame that we couldn't take that to its natural conclusion but not the end of the world either and these elephants i don't like walking into the unknown and i should definitely not be walking towards water 
So I'm going to use my Amulet of the Acrobat to just take some free steps past these sons of guns. I guess relatively free. And okie dokes, what can I do against the rest of you kiddlywinks, huh? Scroll of Poison limits my mobility since I don't have poison resistance at the moment, unfortunately. I do see this ring here though, and I'm definitely excited for that son of a gun. Let's see, what can I do? I guess we might as well keep walking. If we're not going to be standing our ground and fighting there regardless, why the heck not do a little bit of a loop-de-loop -loop here? Can bring our water moxin friend back to somewhere a bit more my speed. Perfect. Then let's hope for some good cloud placement. We get it. And we burn this son of a gun to the ground. Wonderful. Not too shabby at the end of the day. So, these other stairwells are still a little bit dangerous. Lots of friends. Can't wait for us to go chain lightning and accidentally kill ourselves. You have no idea, because I have not cast chain lightning a single time, and so I have no idea how it works. And I think odds are pretty... Pretty high, pretty good that we'd end up doing exactly that if we end up going that route. Which is not to say we're not potentially going to, because I'm always happy to try out new spells. And I mean, it's the only way to find your new favorite spell is by actually giving it a shot. But I think it is that aspect of it that has uh, held me back from trying Chain Lightning before. Because going into it without any expectations or knowledge as to what kind of output it's going to have seems like a bit of a recipe for disaster for sure right, let's get some overall poison on these sons of guns frog should die to that beautiful and even you my friend death x have a pretty high regeneration factor but with enough poison you can still get a decent amount of damage chunking through and in fact, I'm hoping to kill you. Turns out I should have just saved up for Ignite Poison. There we go. Perfect. Got there in the end anyway. I'm hoping this son of a gun doesn't notice me. Okay, they've now noticed me. Oh, look at that. Chain Lightning. Yay. Polar Vortex and Firestone. Uh, Firestorm are the only level 9 spells you've cast. I mean, they're definitely pretty solid. I really like Polar Vortex, because I was always a big fan of Tornado. But uh, I will say that Shatter, there's nothing quite like it. If you ever find yourself with an opportunity in the future to cast at Colgate, I would highly recommend giving it a shot. It is one of the more satisfying spells to cast, to say the least. The chain lightning hits a target and then bounces to all others within three and so on until it grounds out in line of sight. Each arc does less damage and you can only get hit once. Yeah, it sounds terrifying to use. I'm in. <laughs> this might be the, the run to learn it. I mean, at the end of the day, at least the advantage to learning it on a cat is even if it goes horribly wrong, we uh, have the opportunity to die one time and it's not the end of the world. Okay, can I deal with my Hydra friend here? Okay, first of all, you get poisoned. Oh gosh, more frogs, more Hydras. <laughs> I didn't sign up for more Hydras. Well, I guess we're just going to get our frogs next to us here and run away. This stairwell is temporarily off limits. Let's not head back down that way. St. Ross, you see that we're still living the cat life, or lives rather? Oh yeah. <laughs> but this one, now this one is the, the cat. I have no doubt in my mind that Bunda is going to uh, do what all previous Felids have failed to accomplish. And that's something we can put our money into, okay. Or, you know, immediately Make some regrettable decisions. That's fine too. Perfect. Just run you on a little bit of a loopy loop, my friend. And there we go. Getting airstrike also makes our air um, commitment a little more palatable. I think we will end up learning that here. It's 
Soul check. Yeah, I was pretty sure we had storm form, and we do indeed. So many options for the future here. But before I forget, let's learn Blink, since I was supposed to learn that many, many encounters ago, and just completely forgot. An air strike has some nice non-poison specific damage, especially in a wide open area. It does some truly incredible work. And so it's like a bigger CBL. I think that's how I've heard it described before as well, cool game. Say if you have an air staff, it does tons of damage, really take half, but you know, cat paws. Yep, tis the the way of the world. No storm form bliss mana pulled assault. That's probably the route we will go. I'm tempted to not do it because that's been like every run. Every spellcaster run in the entire game, but it will probably play a role, regardless. One way or another. Let's see. Let's try and get an eight-headed hydra dusted here. We at least have the magic for it this time, and we have the runway, so I have pretty good odds. Fantastic. And now if we could run into our other two Hydra friends that we left behind in that kind of a situation, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Again, light you on fire. No, do not walk into that cloud of flame. Thank you, game, protecting me from myself. And gosh, that got out of hand fast, but... Hey, we learned to spell just for such an occasion. Get absolutely wrecked, my friend. Beautiful. And not too shabby at the end of the day here. Definitely starting to get a decent selection of options at our disposal. Even for killing Hydras, Airstrike is probably better than the old Mephitic Cloud Ignite Poison, so that's beautiful. That hack would let you walk into it. Oh, there were days where DCSS would as well. I mean, it's so funny how much the game has gotten rid of ways that you can just insta-kill your own characters, because the big one back in the day was like deep water and lava. Any like enemies that could push you could actually push you into deep water and runs over. You're just dead. Good day, sir. So it's definitely a lot more forgiving these days. I feel like even the reminders that like, do you really want to do this? I don't know when those were added to the game. I feel like they're not day zero DCSS features as well. At some point the devs decided to be a little bit kinder to new players and to people who play a little too mindlessly like myself. And for that, we are forever grateful definitely has saved us from making mistakes many a time but fantastic okay airstrike turns out was a, a beautiful addition here a wonderful investment of our skills very happy to see it and death yaks again are pretty much the ideal enemies for us to come across here give a ridiculous amount of vxp for how relatively simple they are for us to deal with you do love to see it. And let us get one more Ignite Poison off on this son of a gun. Ah, oh, not quite enough. Definitely had high hopes, but Sting, I guess, is the ticket at the end of the day there. Not too shabby. And then again, before the Ajib nerf, Ajib was almost that with Acid Wand. <laughs> oh, it... A jib with wands is, yeah, a whole nother story. I mean, Acid Wand is bad and all, but a jib with an Ice Blast is where I really draw the line. That's where you're in deep trouble on any character, because at least on like a cat, especially with something like the Amulet of Acrobat, I have a chance of surviving an Acid Wand, but anything undodgeable is an absolute nightmare. I should say undodgeable and high damage. Bit of an, a Wombo combo. Okie dokes, not too shabby here. I should also come in here, we'll inscribe these sons of guns at R1, and let's just get Ideen. We have a scroll requirement? Okay. I like the sound of that. Still three ID scrolls, so let's just chug through these sons of guns. Beautiful. And let's see what we have, actually. A reflection amulet with evocable invisibility, resistance to poison, and 
I was gonna say end shield in plus five, but that's just the standard reflection stuff. The commentary on charming elsewhere. We probably don't have to worry about spell books since we do have Sif to help us out in that regard, so amulet it is. I'll take it. Bit of resist poison is actually quite nice. Excuse me, this will allow us to drop mephitic clouds right on top of ourselves if uh, need be. Oh gosh. Had one burp and then it suddenly turned into a string of hiccups for whatever reason. Oh, the human body. Quite the, quite the machine. Okie dokie, that is lair pretty much done. A lot of times this is where we would turn around for a wee bit here, come back to lair 5 in the future. Because of how well this went, I might take a peek into Lair 5. <laughs> Famous last words, that. And should also start thinking about invocation training. We're pretty dang close. Or rather, we're not even pretty dang close. We have access to Divine Exegesis, and we definitely want to be able to use that to save our run if things start going horribly downhill. So, very happy with that. Now the Conjurations is also looking pretty dang schnazzy. Yeah, coming up to 10 won't take too, too long. Let's also put Transmutation on in the background. Slow burn that son of a gun, since we will want that eventually. And that should be a nice little combo to hold us over for the time being. Yeah, good cold resistance for this son of a gun. If I get turned to stone, that's a bit of a problem. I mean, I can be happy that we got that poison resistance just in time for this son of a gun to uh, come crawling out of the woodwork. Hello, my poisonous friend. Perfect. And yeah, if it's a mostly poison-themed floor, then I'm not exactly thrilled. But it should be fairly manageable at the same... Or in the same token or on the same side of things, so not too shabby here. Let's take you upstairs, my friend. 20 damage? Less than ideal, shall we say. But we can start off with one of those. Even a quick a quick paralysis. There we go. That should do the trick. Fantastic. Now we'll start to be a little more cautious with mana usage and just make sure we always have some as our backup for when something just like that happens. Which version was it that Jib got nerfed? So that's super recent, isn't it? Isn't that even could have been 0.29? Because I feel like in 0.28, I was starting to do some exploration into dungeon sprints to see if that's something I might want to do as a series in the future. And uh, one of said dungeon sprints starts off with the Jib in a room and it is terrifying. Basically starting off in that one, convinced me to go away from my plan because at one point I was like okay I could do a challenge stream where I have to win all the dungeon sprints in any order but as a streak and that dungeon sprint alone made me decide that that was not possible because it was basically a coin flip if a jib had an ice blast acid or even like even a flame wand could have been the end you were screwed <laughs> I think it was 0.29 it feels recent change yeah, and I think it was kind of part and parcel with the new ones as well, because a jib with Quicksilver also would have been just stupidly painful to deal with. So that makes a certain amount of sense. But we do have this uh, Steam Dragon to deal with, so we want some resistance to fire here. I'm so scared of using this ring on the off chance that we get deteriorated in one way or another but we'll go with it here and should make quick work of that buddy regardless so you know i guess it didn't really matter at the end of the day but hey still always happy to play it a little bit cautiously oh there you are my friend feel a bit more experienced perfect and rinse and repeat now this is definitely not too bad of a uh, series of enemies if we could just get nothing but these sons of guns i'm all for it okay i spoke a little too soon 
Huh. So, if we put on fire resistance, we at least knock you down to 36 max damage. So you can't one-shot us, but you still can two-shot us. Hmm. At 90 health, we can deal 2d21 per turn. So ideally, we still kill you in like three or four turns. But I'm very likely dead in that time too. Oh, and you've seen me. Okay, so let's immediately put on our fire resistance regardless. And... Let's see how that goes. Not great. Let's read teleport. I'm probably not gonna be able to get that popped off. We'll see. Oh, I actually almost killed the dragon. <laughs> Turns out we could have potentially just uh, finished the job there, but that's fine. We'll do another quick hop here. <laughs> Let's keep jumping around as much as possible. Let these buddies come next to us just to throw out a blink. You know, I was definitely hoping to land somewhere slightly better than that. Okie dokes. Well, here goes nothing. Or monster wand damage nerf, to be exact. You probably knew what, that, uh, or I probably knew what you meant by the gym nerf. Oh yeah. Well, the wand damage as well as the number, the selection of wands that a jib has access to, right? At least I remember that being somewhere in the patch notes. Could be wrong. But okay, let's paralyze you. Cool. The rest of you we can potentially blow up. In fact, oh, channel mana is at 41% failure. That's definitely a wee bit untenable, but what we can do instead is become a tree. So that will give us 30 AC. Feels a little more comfortable, a little more confidence inducing. And then we just have to stand our ground here for a wee bit longer. We have lots of heal wounds potions if necessary. I guess we could also just go with the Ambrosia here. That's pretty solid. In fact, I'll just wait out that entire confusion. And we can just murder you kiddos. Perfect. So definitely not the end of the world after all here. Even with the slightly less than ideal circumstances. And you know what? You're still going to be a problem. Hmm. You only remember the one damage change? Well, it can spawn with indirectly... Or what it can spawn with indirectly change with alternative items. You're right. Now that you mention it, I did kind of set up a, a bit of a, a trap win-win there. Not intentionally, but... Oh, jeez. Right. Both of you suddenly being fully operational is a bit of a problem, so do I turn into a tree again here? <laughs> I think I just might. Could even end up still going with a, uh, whatchamacallit, heal wounds potion, but that's a decent start for us. We'll murder the cane toad and then start swinging at you two while we're at it. With 30 AC, a 10 damage enemy isn't exactly too much of a threat, so that's wonderful. And then finally we get an opportunity to heal up after just being inundated in the onslaught here. A bit of a breath of fresh air, at the very least. Smite Toad, scarier than Orc Sorcerer's fun run. Life of a cat right there. Basically anything that competes with us in speed is by definition already way scarier than the majority of enemies in the game, even if it's something that we can kind of deal with. <laughs> and cane toads are already up there in terms of scariness to encounter on any character for me. I have a, I have a healthy fear of cane toads. Okie dokie, speak of the devil. Hello there, my friend. Let's get you out in the open so we at least have the extra 
damage. And there we go. Yes, we still have you, my friend. Let's blow your mind. Wonderful. Turns out Lair 5 did end up being a little bit sketchier than I would have liked here. Not exactly ideal, but we're managing to make it through and it is a nice chunk of experience for us. Hey, Contra Ball Lightning. There we go. 